These are moments that people take for granted. You reflect what you really don't have when you see what others have, especially in terms of family. I don't celebrate Christmas often. It's for me, it becomes like a time of mourning, just trying to think of you know, what it really means not to have you know, your mom, your dad around, or not to even have you know, your siblings around. My birthday as well, you know, I, I kind of say I was born on 1st January, not really sure whether that, <laughs> that's the date that I was born. But also not having people around with you to celebrate the moment. An institution can never really be home. So I grew up in a family of uh, six. I was around five years old. My mother was brutally murdered. Uh, we stayed in the hospital for a few months and then we were taken to a children's home. It was hard for us to interact with the house mothers because, I mean, we knew that they were just employed. I mean, they were just employees. For me, touch is important. Someone to engage with. My mother touched me more than the staff. I mean, they would touch us when we were being beaten and used to be woken up in the morning just by banging the door. In one of the workshops, they were teaching us that the best place for all children to be raised up is a home setting, a family. And I was shocked to hear one gentleman said, growing up in a children's home, what he hated most was the caregivers. And he said, they took care of us, not because they loved us, but because they were paid. Part of his life was shattered. He doesn't have a sense of belonging. For the first time, I saw that what I've been laboring, thinking was the best for these children is actually something damaging. And I just felt tears flowing from my eyes. Many people look at orphanages as the only option for abandoned children, for families that are struggling with poverty. Child's Eye Foundation started out as an orphanage ourselves, called Malaika Baby's Home. But eight years and over of research has shown us that orphanages have a very serious impact and harmful effect. Children under the age of three who spend more than three months in an orphanage or an institutional care facility are likely to present at least one month delay in their development. A very small number of young people who are coming out of institutions are actually following through with tertiary education, going to universities. They lack the very basic skills they need to function independently in the community. They do not have the skills to negotiate conflict. They are more likely to be victims of exploitation. There is research that shows us that 60% of the young women become single mothers and then in turn end up using orphanages for their care of their children. Ten years later, one of my brothers showed up in the institution and I couldn't even talk, you know, my mother tongue, losing my identity. I really didn't know my name. It is not because orphanages are not trying to do the best that they can. But this environment in which you have one care worker to a ratio of 15, 20, sometimes 50 children, cannot provide that nurturing, safe environment that children need in order to grow, to develop, to fulfill their potential. And as a consequence, the brain development is truly affected. My biological father visited me once in the institution. I was around eight or 10 years old. But when he visited, the social worker told him never to visit again, otherwise we'd go back home with him. I wish that the social worker would have made an effort just to find some of our relatives, some of our siblings, just to feel like I belong somewhere. Between 80 and 90 percent of the children in orphanages globally have one or more parents, 
extended families are communities where they are coming from. So children in orphanages are not orphans. The reasons behind the separation between them and their families are poverty, lack of access to basic services like health, education, disability, and many times discrimination. After leaving K, I really struggled a lot. Getting jobs is hard. Just even taking public transport was a hell of a problem. You know, keeping up with that relationship becomes very hard for you. That's the life that uh, brought me to the whole issue of, you know, being involved in child protection issues. Pursuing my degree in social work, also advancing to do a master's in child development because I really wanted to understand myself. The next challenge for me was, how is this going to happen? And then God brought in CIF, Child's Eye Foundation, and they started training us. They are helping to deal with the problem at the grassroots than just dealing with it on the streets. What we do is, first of all, prevention. We want to make sure that we can close the tap, stop children going into institutional care. We look for and support families that are vulnerable, families that are at risk, do strengthening, and go through things like parenting support, income generation, support them with skills development, but also give them access to education. If we can't do that, so if there's children that are growing up in orphanages, well, we'll look at reintegrating them. So what our social work team does is they will go out and trace, and it takes time. Now, whilst we're tracing, we place those children in foster care so that they're still in a family-based setting. If there is no family and we cannot trace, we've tried our very best, then this child will go to a government panel, an independent panel that will review our documents and our assessments and our tracing. We take another parent who is an adoptive parent who we've also assessed and checked, and this government panel decides that yes, we agree for this child to be adopted and we agree for this parent to adopt this child. It's an acknowledgement that, you know, children are individuals, you know, with hearts, with minds, with a present, but also with a future. It's work that really recognizes the fact that childhood really matters. And uh, we also address it, we're also saying that uh, remove poverty from households, don't remove children from households. Strengthening our community services is the easier thing to do. So ensuring that we have a good hospital, a good clinic, a good school, that we have services that encourage and support families to look after their children. Orphanages are a very expensive solution because they require an infrastructure. They require a lot of stuff. You buy everything in bulk. You have to run a kitchen. About a quarter of a billion US dollars comes into Uganda to keep children in orphanages. Now let's just imagine what we could do by reinvesting those resources in families. We would be able to start working to develop a child protection and care system that relies on strengthening families, coordinating efforts, and ensuring high quality care for those children who need in a family-based alternative. At UBS Optimus Foundation, we treat philanthropic giving with the same importance that we do financial investments. We treat it with the same rigor and demands to make sure that every dollar, which is vitally important, goes towards driving sustained, lasting impact. We're fortunate to have UBS uh, and the Optimus Foundation that are supporting us and that have understood clearly why it's very important to strengthen families. And this didn't just start now. I mean, UBS was here. They brought out a couple of philanthropists who wanted to see and understand. So they came out and visited our foster care, met some of the families, and even gave us ideas of how to skill them up in business. What is really needed is one, to inform donors that their generosity can be transferred from funding orphanages to strengthening community structures. Number two, we need to work with governments around the world so that they also understand that when they receive this money, they should channel it into their social protection services. The work in Tororo aims to demonstrate how orphanages can replace themselves with other services that are open to the community and do not provide the type of care that we know damages children. 
we already have that beautiful building. One side of the building will be tailoring and crafts. And then the other side is for carpentry and welding. We'll also have a class for computer training. There are many other ideas that will come through interacting with CIF, with open homes for children, but not again keeping children here full time. In the future economy, a nation's strength is going to be in the minds of its people. We believe that investing in children is the single best investment a government or a philanthropist can do. It's by making those children happy, healthy, educated, empathetic individuals that they can build the strong and stable societies that can grow their countries and economies out of poverty. The tomorrow I see when I close my eyes is to see these children happy something they have lacked for many years here in Smile Africa. They are going to relate with children in the neighborhood. They are going to play and run in the rain, bake cakes using the soil. It's a bright tomorrow and in the right direction. It's a future whereby every child really has someone to call, you know, mommy and baba. It's not really seeing a generation of second class children. If you did ask them what they really wanted is to be normal, being like everyone else in a family, in a community. <laughs>